goes in. Again, I actually did um, microwave it. And some people don't like microwave, and if you don't, that's fine. But you just need to soften them. And then added to that, I am putting this, which is Omega 3 butter. Now, it's quite stiff, so you kind of have to crumble it in. Because Omega 3 butter is essentially lots of um, different... Um, nuts and it's all sort of combined to make a butter and that goes like that and as you can see now as you can see it's not really mushing together but that's okay so the next thing we add is this stuff now that is one teaspoon of cumin and one teaspoon of um of um fennel now i love fennel i just love the flavor of it so that's why I always put it in there. Um, so add to that. Just add it. Throw it in. And then we just give that a stir. Now I'll be honest, I do like to get my hands in it. Because I think if you get your hands in it, you can feel the texture better. That was what my... One of my tutors taught me that when I was in catering college. So... Take off your rings because it does get a bit messy. And if you've got rings on, you can get a bit messed up. Okay, so there's that. And then we've got... I've used lime juice because I like the flavour of lime. But you just put lime juice in it as well. Give it... Now, I'm only using half for the moment because I don't know how much I actually need. The next thing you're going to need... I've done some more herbs here. These are actually just... Um, fennel, some more fennel seeds and also some caraway seeds and I just mix that up like such and you can already smell, oh look at that now it looks a little bit like coleslaw so if you wanted to you could add at this point, you could really add some vegan mayonnaise and it would make a really nice coleslaw but obviously that's not what I'm doing I'm making fritters now in order to make fritters the best, for me, personally, the best flour that I use is this gram flour. I don't know if you can see that. You just buy it from Tesco's or you can buy it online from a vegan delivery store, anything like that. But Dove's um, is a very good flour. Now, gram flour, for those of you that don't know, it just looks like that. Now, it looks like flour, but like clumpy flour. And the reason for that is made out of chickpeas. So we're going to put some in. Now I do this by eye because it's very difficult to know how much you need to bind it all. So I always put in about half and then give it a stir without any more liquid. Because you don't want that much liquid that everything falls apart when you cook it. Now if you do fritters normally you can put an egg in to bind it. But I actually think that if you see as you stir, you're actually irritating the um, vegetables. So what happens is any moisture in the vegetables comes out. Again, I'm going to use the other half now of that lime. You can just use water if you want. It's just I think lime is quite a nice flavour and it gives you lots of vitamin C, which at the moment we all need. Again, give it a stir. Now then, you can see it's already starting to look a bit like fritters. But because I like quite battery, what I call battery fritters, I'm just going to put in more of that. And I'm going to put a drop of water to actually make it bind together. Now at this point, you just have to keep on stirring it until all that flour goes and it will go like a, see, like that. You just keep stirring it with your fork. So there's no fancy instruments needed, to be quite honest. It's just a matter of gratering it. And you can do it in, you can grater in the machine. I choose to do it by hand just because I can't find, I don't, well, I can't find the, my gadget for it. And also, I just think that there's no point in, doing it when I'm 
um, just for one. So that's how it looks. Now these can be frozen as well. I'm just going to have a bit of a tidy up so that I can get things showed to you a bit better. Because my kitchen isn't always the tidiest, I'm afraid. This is what happens when you cook. When you're a cook, you don't always have everything tidy. So, that there is how it should look. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat my oil. Now, I use a flat frying pan like that. It's a pancake pan, actually. But I find that tea fowl pans are very good um, because they heat up really quick. So let me just move the video camera now and let us hope that I can get to a position where you can see what I'm doing. So, oh, I forgot, my, I forgot this as well. So this is the olive oil. Now, you can put just a splash. I just put a splash. And I'm talking a little splash because olive oil um, is a little bit of a... It just gives you more nutrients, basically. Now, I haven't put salt and pepper in it because I think that at the moment, I don't need salt and pepper. I've got plenty of herbs and you don't want to overdo it. So, that's that. Now then, that's how it should look. Now, you can leave that to stand, I would say, for probably 20 minutes. Because what happens is the gluten that is in the actual um, flour will begin to help it to um, cook. So let us see if I can do this so you can see how I'm cooking it. see that very well oops that's, that's it oh it's not bad you can see that you can also see a lot of other clutter but that's okay if i turn it that way better so hopefully you can now see the pan now you can see i don't know if you can see but i've used um, a spray on it and um the spray uh, it's just, it is literally just um, a spray using um, coconut butter. Now then, we're going to shape them now. So we dip our hands in the water. Now this is very important because it stops them from sticking. Which sounds daft, doesn't it? Because it's water. But you need your pan to be hot. And you just make them into a little patty like that, you see. And then you slap it on. And you can hear it sizzling, I think. I'm going to do three of these, I think. Because this is going to be my main dinner. And you just do them, I just do them in my hands. Because I'm not that precious about looking at the how the, how the shape is. Because I just think that they don't need to be a particular shape. For me, if you want to be really professional and everything, then yeah, you can shape them a bit better and do them a bit better now you can see because of the style of the pan it slip it doesn't stick rather see it doesn't stick and they're already starting to cook i can smell them starting to cook already now then put this to one side for a minute wash my hands and i am going to serve this with some little tomatoes that I've got. Again, I'm using up, you see, because tomorrow is my day where I get um, my delivery from Riverford, which is my favourite place for getting veg. So what I tend to do is try and use up what I can tonight so that I won't use... I won't, I won't have to worry. Oh, look at that. So I'm just turning them over now. Now, you can see, a bit well done, actually, and that's because I, my oil was a little bit hot, but you can see them there, look. So just let them cook. And these, I'm just going to put these on here to warm up a little bit. Because then, 
they'll be nice and warm when I serve it. I'm also going to serve mine on because I, I've got spinach left. So I'm going to do a bit of spinach as well. Because I think spinach, again, I do need to wash this then. So I'll do that um, quickly. The thing with river food is it's very fresh and it all comes fresh from the door. But it's hand-picked by farmers. And when it's picked by farmers, obviously, it's not necessarily going to be. They don't clean it. They don't wash it. So just wash that. And then throw it in the pan here. That'll do got pan and dairy. Try not to look at all my rub it, all my stuff in the background. Now I just check these now because I don't want them dry because I don't like it when they're dry inside. Oh one's gone a bit black. Never mind. So now these are ready. So I'm just gonna take them off. Now I'm lucky I've got a um a hot bit in the centre there so I'll just take them off and then I'll just wait now for this spinach to cook and then I can place it up and show you all done and um, I'm also going to make some mango 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 um kind of puree with some coconut yogurt and it's really just because I quite like to have that um, sweetness when I'm doing it because it's carrots as well so for that I'll show you how we make it it's the most simplest thing ever so I'll just show you um, quickly how to make it now I don't know about you guys but I have a husband who eats meat so I always have two sets of knives in my kitchen which might sound a bit daft well, actually, it's not because having two sets of knives in the kitchen is a good, for me anyway, I think, is a very good way of making sure that I don't contaminate my food with his meat. Oh, now, this is not as ripe as I would like it to be, which is a shame. So I don't, won't be able to do that, um, to do it. And it doesn't look like it's nice in the middle, actually. No, it's not. It's not nice at all. That well, that was an idea that we can't use because it's broke. It's not broken, so we can't use that. But that's okay. We just make do. We make do with what we've got. There's people in the world who are starving. And we have to be thankful for the food that we have on our place. Because you know what? Not everybody has good food. So what I will do is a bit of a cheat, but I have got some lemon, uh, some vegan mayonnaise and lemon. So what I will do, and it is a bit of a cheat this, but it's all I can do at short notice. A bit of that, a bit of squeeze of that, and then we're going to put some lemon in it don't need a lot because otherwise it's too sour a bit of that i should have really done this in a, a jar because you can shake it and you see but it's okay then give it a really good stir it's a bit lumpy because it needs to stir more that's it spinach takes like three seconds it does not take long at all that hasn't worked either because I need a little whisk. So we find a little whisk. I don't like that. So I just cover it and do it like that so that if it doesn't splash, then 